Welcome to my world. Two escargot, pate, frise, two green salads. Okay, man, it's not here. Lamb chop, steak frites. Shouldn't you be doing something? Two faux filet and a pepper steak. Come on, make the dessert. Chocolate tart, please. As a cook, tastes and smells are my memories. And now I'm in search of new ones. So I'm leaving New York City and hope to have a few epiphanies around the world. And I'm willing to go to some lengths to do that. I am looking for extremes of emotion and experience. I'll try anything. I'll risk everything. I have nothing to lose. New Orleans, Louisiana. So finally, here I am. All that famous Southern hospitality. Tony yeah, hi. Jeez. So. Oh, oh. I knew it. I told my agent New Orleans was a bad idea. My whole life, you gotta understand, people have been saying to me, how do you like New Orleans? Assuming, of course, that as a chef, I've been here before. And I'm deeply, deeply ashamed to say that this is the first time at age 46 that I've been here. Is there a more important city traditionally in American culinary history, a more vibrant, diverse, and influential? Probably not. Count one. Count two. What do I know about Cajun and Creole cuisine? Not that much. Third reason, I've said some unpleasant things about the man who's perhaps New Orleans' favorite, most respected, and beloved son. Well, you know who he is. He's a chef, let's put it that way. You said some mean things about him? Yeah. That's for talking bad about Emerald. I'm getting the message I should get the hell out of Dodge for a while. Hey, you do read re re that sign? Man, get the hell away from me. What's the matter with you? Get somewhere else. I don't know whether I'm ready to plunge right into uh, the center of town yet. Besides, one thing I'm not interested in is the whole French Quarter thing. No beads, no boobs, and no Bourbon Street. I want to check out the culinary margins. So I decide to head out into the sticks. I've heard about this kooky Cajun, Wild Bill, who lives out on the bayou cooking alligators. Hey, I've been to Cambodia, so it sounds fine by me. Gator. Gator, gator, gator. Fried gator, smothered gator, skewered gator, gator gumbo. Hell, they'll probably make you a peanut butter and gator sandwich if you ask for it. But the name of this place is Zam Swamp Tours. So before I can lift a fork, I find myself on a boat. Why do I always end up on boats in this show? My taste for reptiles is well established over time, so I thought it only appropriate that before I delve into uh, the mysteries and delights of central New Orleans, get up close and personal with some big reptiles. The words taste like chicken will never come up on this show, I promise. My guide is Wild Bill himself, and as we get underway, he asked me if I've ever tasted alligator. You know, I don't think I have. It tastes like chicken. I was waiting for somebody to say that. It's actually, it actually is a meaty taste. It's not like fish or anything. Back in around the 70s, alligators was on the verge of going extinct. And that was it. Wild Bill started talking about alligators. In the crocodilian family, you have four species. And talking. Between the tip of the nose and the eye. Every inch is a foot. And talking. Notice the teeth are pointed. I would teeth flat, but you out for that. Uh-huh. That teeth are pointed. You feel this? That's all bone. I know a lot more about my dinner than I needed to know. As we press on, I'm beginning to feel like Chief Brody in Jaws. You know, setting out in search of the elusive beast with the crazy captain. The afternoon sun is blazing. I'm surprised that we haven't seen any alligators yet. They're not scared of anything. <laughs> I'm beginning to get the strange sensation I'm being watched. Dump a body out here, but it's never fine. My dinner is out there somewhere. Right. There he is, Mickey. Pop back up right now. Yeah. See him? Oh, oh, come here, boo boo. Oh, oh, come. Oh, come here. Oh, oh, oh. You've got to be kidding me. Apparently, Wild Bill speaks alligator. Oh, oh. The babies do that to the mama. The little ones do that when I, I guess they scared or they can't find the mom. Apparently he knows what he's talking about because the whole family shows up. 
They're kind of cute. I wish I could say no gators were harmed for the making of this episode, but hey, folks, check your tuners. This ain't National Geographic. I'm gonna be on a cooking show. <laughs> Move over, Emerald. Back on his houseboat, Wild Bill is fixing up some deep fried gator nuggets. Once you got your meat done, ready to go. I mix you up a little deal. With my people called marinated. What was that? With my people called marinated. I think he said marinated? I use mustard, hot sauce, more for flavor, okay? I like cayenne pepper. We said, you know, we just stick our finger like that, get everything stirred up good, and you grab that meat. Just like that. I'm thinking, bam. And you put them in your fish fry. If you don't have fish fry, I was okay. You want your Greek hot, you know? It's propane, you got butane, you got natural gas. Uh, Bill. I had my curtain hanging down here like that with that fire like that, man. I said I won't burn the house down, you know? Children, don't try this at home. Alright? Drop them on in. Basically, it's just like fried fish, fried chicken. You read about those things in the papers. Budding TV Food Network host Anthony Bourdain's incinerated torso is found beset by crabs and insects in a bayou. There we go. Finally, the nuggets are done. And I gotta say, they aren't bad. Oh, that is good. That is good. Golden brown crust, dip in a cayenne pepper sauce. Mmm, it's rep delicious. Fried, fried gator nuggets. Fried gator. Real good. I hate to say it tastes like chicken. It's such a cliche, but it kind of it, it is chickeny. I tried. I like Wild Bill. He's my kind of people. Today's near-death experience was just what I needed to get my priorities straight. After saying my goodbyes, I head out into the night to thumb a ride. New Orleans, here I come, ready or not. Back in town, I start the new day in a full bore flop sweat. I am freaking hot. I could go for a frosty, freezy, something icy, something cold. I need to refrigerate my brain and quick. Hmm, Hanson Snowblizz sounds promising. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how you doing? I need something to air condition my brain. I'm hot. You want a snowball to cool you off? Yeah, that's I'll good. I'll make one right quick. Suddenly, a block of ice is pulled out and loaded like a cannonball into a heavy steel chamber. And with a flip of a switch, ice shoots out of what looks like antique ductwork. Do they have a permit for this thing? There's ice flying everywhere, even the old woman's hair. This is really like come. You know, NASA recovered this and uh, floating in outer space. It's unearthly, it's lighter than air. The frosty ice cup is drenched in the homemade syrup. I order pink lemonade. Yeah, I make those. I make all the flavors myself. I don't give customers nothing I don't eat myself. For the last step, the snowball is topped off with sweetened condensed milk. Mmm, this is really good. I never had anything like it. It's not sorbet, it's not granita. It's not Italian ice, it's not ice cream. Something, something else going on here. What's their secret? Maybe NASA is involved, or is it the machine? I just spent $5,000 for, for the latest state-of-the-art sorbet machine from Switzerland, and this is a lot better. Maybe it's the 63 years the Hansons have been in business together. We started out to open the shop. We sell selling like that in 39 for two cents in scoops. Whatever their secret, the Hansons have made me feel welcome. So, hi, little girl. What flavor are you eating? Oh! That's for being mean to Emerald. You gotta love a town with 24-hour bars. But you gotta love a town even more for having a place we can not only drink, but wash your, uh, wash your clothes. And I woke up this morning reeking of burning grease and gator fluid. 
And I'll tell you, I could really go for a little mid-afternoon cocktail, a nice clean batch of laundry. Ah, Checkpoint Charlie's. Yo, hi. How you doing? Can I have a uh, maker's mark? Laundry this way? Yeah, all the way back to the back. Oof. I see smell like alligator. This is very convenient. Nobody likes an alcoholic with filthy clothes. Uh, you look familiar. Yep. You ever see this jerk on the Food Network who travels around the world? Oh, the guy with the bad teeth? Yeah. Skinny guy? Oh, yeah. Jesus, I hate that guy. Pick this up a notch. Oh, gee. God, that Oh. Mmm. Fresh as a daisy. I'm hungry. I need a mid-afternoon snack. In fact, I need a substantial mid-afternoon snack. Something that speaks directly to my soul. Something like soul food. What else? Ham hocks, black-eyed peas, fried chicken, collard greens, and cornbread. Soul food is traditional African-American fare from the South, said to be good for the soul. And that's definitely the case at the Harbor Restaurant. Hi, I'm Tony. Tony, OK. Ham hocks are good. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, is that the greens in there? Hopefully with plenty of pot liquor in there. And the beans. Oh, yeah. And maybe some cornbread also. Don't be fooled by the cafeteria-style service. This stuff is so good. What do they say down here? It makes you want to smack your mama. Beautiful thing. You might not find many tourists at the harbor, but it's the kind of place you'll find me at time and time again. It's pure comfort food. I think I'll have mine al fresco. Mm. Little ham hock, greens, rice. Best part, pot liquor from the greens. Nectar of the gods. Drink that. That's pot liquor, son. That's the stuff that dreams are made of. Oh, the, the greens alone worth the price of admission. And the best part, when I'm done, my laundry will be fresh and clean. As evening approaches, I'm getting hungry for a quintessential New Orleans experience. A little research in a places off the beaten path pays off. Going to Giacomo. Now, one might think Giacomo, but in fact, it's apparently Giacomo. Sort of like I thought it was pecan, but it's actually pecan. It's so confusing down here. They told me they have a special table set up for me in the VIP section. Beyond that, I, I don't know nothing. Hi, how are you? Giacomo, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Oh, we're it's a pleasure. This is the VIP uh, section? The VIP oh, table. Excellent, finest kind. Yep. Yeah. All right, I can do this. Ah. While I climb into our booth, let me fill you in. <laughs> Turns out Giacomo's is one of the most swinging joints in the New Orleans local scene. And no wonder, Chef Jock Leonardi has a few aces up his sleeve, like the legendary chef Austin Leslie, the Babe Ruth, the Joe DiMaggio of fried chicken. We had a great Creole soul food restaurant in the 60s, 70s, 80s called Chazeline. The great chef. I mean, to be on that line at 67 years old is just fantastic. I keep asking me what's good. I say it's all good. If it wasn't good, I wouldn't be here. When I need to know something about the old recipes, which I like using, I go to Austin. It's a family affair. We've got a what great mixture of uh, like soul food to new Creole to old Creole, just a mix. Mm -hmm. Smorgasbord of uh, New Orleans food. I call it real New Orleans food. All right. So I think we'll just start off with the appetizers, just have fun with it. OK, this is the alligator sausage cheesecake. This is a savory cheesecake, almost like a quiche. Gouda cheese, cream cheese, Parmesan, crust, Creole country alligator sausage, and shrimp. No problem. Oh, that's good. This is the, the chicken livers. They're sauteed. Nice brown gravy, a little Worcestershire, a little soy sauce. This is a dish Austin Leslie taught me. I love chicken livers, but this is really, that's something special. This is our fried po'boy. Now, what's in this? What is it? It's, it's, it's almost like a Philly cheesesteak. We uh, hollow the bread out right. with the meat, the cheese, the peppers, drop it in uh, the egg wash and flour and fry it up, and then everything inside just melts. That sounds all good to me. My cardiologist might not agree, but... Oh, that's deadly. Oh, that's really good. That's scary good. If I die here, I'll die happy. 
Is this the Godzilla and fried chicken right here, guys? Yeah, right here. That's the uh, soft shell crab on top of fried green tomato. Godzilla meets uh, fried green tomatoes. A lot of Remy Lad sauce. And Little kids will start crying. You bring that out to the table. It's, Mommy, it'll fall on me. <laughs> and this is the legendary fried chicken. Petite portions is not uh, not the thing down no, here, is it? You don't go away hungry. Uh huh. That is amazing. 3D. This should probably be illegal. Illegal? That's how good it is. So who eats here? Well, we're mainly locals. There's a lot of great tourists that, you know, they, they hunt out food. It's just great that they, you know, they found me because I'm really off the beaten path. Okay, I gotta tell you, I, I have serious doubts about uh, my mobility. I don't know, I, I think I need a gurney to get home. We're just gonna drive you away. Now this is service. We made it up the curb, dude. As we drive off into the night, I'm thinking, New Orleans isn't such a bad town. Ah, the good life. Driving a table around New Orleans. Yeah, this is the way to travel. With my new friend, Chef Jacques. Cheers. Drinking brewskis. Talking about all the great food this town has to offer. Ah, some Cook's Tour fans. Later, Jacques hooks me up with a local after-hours scene for chefs. Right and I make some more new friends. Cheers. Cheers. And a few more drinks. I love hanging out with other chefs, talking shop. This town is great. Head down, sir. Perpetrator is drunk and disorderly. 46-year-old male TV chef Anthony Bourdain. The Food Network has been notified. Over. You're, uh, Mr. Who? Uh, Anthony Bourdain. I got a show like on the Food Network, Cook's Tour, and I wrote a book called Kitchen Confidential. You know, like, like, don't eat fish on Monday. Maybe you heard of me? No. You know Emerald? Yeah, I know him. And we're really close. We're like this. I really don't care. <sighs> All right, um, a little rough last night, huh? I don't really remember. A little alcohol there. Alcohol might have played a part. You hungry? Well, I could definitely eat. Now, what we gotta do is give you a little idea what the city's about. We're not about just the partying and the drinking about the cuisine, the, the good food. You know, I'd like to do New Orleans right. Maybe I started out on the wrong foot here. Oh, perhaps if we get a good hot meal in you. I have to tell you, usually my encounters with the law are uh, not so fortuitous as this, but you know an awful lot about food. No, we're not all bad guys, and uh, we know our food has a way of changing people's attitudes. There's a little place up the way. We take a ride over there. T. Eva's Creole Soul Food. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna eat? Hey! I'm T. Eva! <laughs> when I get in this kitchen, I am at my very best. I cook, I sing, and I dance. And this is my stage. <laughs> T. Eva's well known all over New Orleans for pralines and sweet pies. <laughs> The good folks in law enforcement also know she's a traditionalist when it comes to Creole home cooking. I've been cooking since I was a little girl starting out at eight years old. Creole cuisine is a merging of French, Spanish, and African influences unique to Louisiana. I have to see about my pot now, okay? Today, T. Eva's making jambalaya, a Creole standard. This is some great smoked sausage for jambalaya. After that comes the big three of Creole cooking. We're gonna put in some onions, celery, bell pepper. How is it looking? Good, huh? <laughs> Finally, she stirs in tomato sauce, water, spices, and rice. It all goes into one pot. Succulent tastes, and it doesn't take long to cook. starting to really smell good in here. Because the rice sauces and the tomato sauce cook together, they have a tendency to marry real well. Right. Oh, look at that. It's a little 
it's done. Serve it up. You ready to eat? <laughs> oh, that's delicious. Well, I hope it brushes in the right spot. You did? Oh, man. I'm glad. This was a very happy uh, first uh, jambalaya experience. And infinitely preferable to uh, well, my career trajectory uh, earlier in the day. Well, you were definitely looking for uh, forward to uh, chip beef on toast. I don't like that. <laughs> you're trying to make you feel like not just a tourist, but like you're at home, one of the family. I think I'm getting close to tapping into the main vein of local New Orleans. Is this it? <laughs> After lunch, the Louisiana sky opens up and really lets us have it. This is no time for exploring. So I have the good detective drive me back to my hotel. With promises, I will abstain quietly in my room for the rest of the night. No matter, the true measure of any city is how good the delivery options are. As it turns out, New Orleans is a paradise. Tonight on Tasty Adventure, Anthony Bourdain is on a mission. Next on a cook's tour. Yeah, Verdi Mart? Verdi Mart. Uh, listen, I got an order for delivery. Absolutely. What would you like? Let me get a, I don't know, what's this, this Mighty Muffalata sandwich thing? Mighty Muffalata? Let me have a bottle of uh, your cheapest bourbon. OK. Give me a pack of smokes. OK, It'll be there in about 30 minutes. I need a few necessary essentials. And Verdi Mart is open around the clock. But the most impressive thing may actually turn out to be the sandwich. A nice, greasy pile of meat and cheese. I find the muffaletta is a local specialty sandwich that originated in 1906 and stuck around ever since. Ham, salami, Swiss cheese, provolone cheese. This is an olive salad, a secret ingredient, which is made with Greek olives, Kalamata olives, uh, red peppers, olive oil, and Romano cheese. That's your muffalata sandwich there. Delivery on a muffalata. Nothing to do now but wait. Now this is what I call takeout. Oh, that's a sandwich. It's freaking big. My mother always told me to never eat anything bigger than your head. I don't know what she said about drinking in the morning. Okay, I know I said I was gonna stay in, but you believe me? Come on, this is New Orleans. I end up at Vaughn's, a favorite local night spot in the Ninth Ward. If you hang with the locals down here, you're really in for a treat. I can't believe I've never been in New Orleans before. I have a feeling I'll be seeing my detective friend again before this night's over.